Hey everyone, and welcome to the Deer's Embroidery Legacy Live. We are live right now, and I have James Deer in the house with me. Uh, Jennifer Deer is not here today because she has a very important job. She is watching a couple of very important people, and I think they're coming in right now. You want to come in here for a second? Okay, this is Noah, and come over here, bud. And this is Eli. All right, and they are the future of the Deer's Embroidery Legacy. Okay, thank you. And they have been with Nana and Papa for the last two weeks. So we've had two weeks of fun in the sun. <laughs> have you guys had fun? Yeah. yeah. Awesome, awesome. Now, what did you do yesterday? I did a skull, and Eli did him and our mom. Awesome. We did some doodling. And on the doodling, and let me just go here, we <laughs> actually had them doodle some designs. And I decided that we're going to do something kind of cool here. We're going to actually do something that I am going to call. You ready for this? Yeah. It's called cadoodles. Do you see that? Okay, so real soon we're going to actually have some cadoodles and I'm going to have Noah and Eli do some designs on screen and we are going to give you guys, so all of you parents and grandparents, we're going to give you some lessons on how to set up your design doodler so that you can actually, uh, I guess, teach your kids or grandkids how to doodle with ease. Now, I think that's about it for you guys, right? But before we go, what did you do today? We went fishing. Okay, we went Nana. fishing. So thanks, guys. Can you take them out of here, Nana? Awesome, awesome. So those are the little doodlers. And let me just go over here, and I'm going to go back. But I wanted to show you guys our fishing trip today because it was awesome. Uh, they are going back tomorrow to Canada, and Jennifer, my beautiful wife, is taking them back. I brought them here on an airplane, the three of us, and Jennifer has taken them back, so it's kind of, it's fair, but uh, we had a wonderful day today, and let me just go here, and James, okay, so hopefully you guys will be able to hear this, and I just wanted to show you this cute little video. This was our fishing trip this morning. What? Okay, James is saying there's no audio. No audio coming in, James? Okay, anyways, I'll be the audio here. We went on the fishing trip, and uh, it was great. The kids had a good time. We'll try to post this on YouTube maybe so you guys can hear some of the comments that they made. But the best part of the trip was we caught a gigantic fish and we caught, there's James. We caught, what kind of fish was it, James? Sailfish. A sailfish. So James caught a sailfish. We saw turtles, all kinds of fun stuff. I'll try to figure out my audio for you guys next time. But it was pretty cool because this sailfish was probably about seven feet long. So we ended up having a great time out in the sun. And as soon as we see it, actually we had an underwater camera when he brought it in. So, you know, we, we all love our tech and our toys, but this was a, a really cool thing. It's, it's one of those once in a lifetime opportunities. And uh, I, I don't know, James, if you'll ever catch another seven foot sailfish, but uh, I, I thought hope. it was just awesome. Anyways. I'll stop sharing that one, guys. Perfect. So anyways, uh, that was our last day today. And uh, the kids go back tomorrow. And we are looking forward to getting back to work. I don't know if any of you have grandkids, but when they're around you for two weeks straight, not much work gets done. But the important thing is the kids are having fun. So I tried to keep it uh, together as much as I could. Right, James? Uh-huh. Okay. So anyways, we are going to talk about our new update and I have a very, very special guest. Uh, and this is of course our very own Linda Rayburn. Hey Linda, how are you? Hey, I'm fine. How are you, John? That awesome, looks like an awesome. awesome trip. It was spectacular. Actually, it was one of those things where, I mean, I, I've never personally caught a sailfish and I know that I probably never will, but to see James bring that in, I was, I was kind of glad that it was him who did it because I don't know if I would have been able to have uh, handled it. It was, 
Uh, were, you were a little tired at the end, weren't you, James? Yeah, just a bit. Definitely so. was. That yeah. was big. That was yeah. Huge. So it was it was awesome. Uh, I got to admit, though, I am looking forward a little bit to the kids going back because it, it feels like I've gotten absolutely nothing done. Uh, over the last, yeah, they, they wear you out. And uh, but again, it's one of those great things. You know, you wouldn't wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, I'm just going to bring this up here because we are here to talk about the software update with the design mm -hmm. doodler. And first off, I just have to thank you because you have been awesome with helping to test all of these builds. And there's been a few of them uh, along the oh, way. I can't even remember how many. They're, they're uh, the developers. I will give credit to those developers. They really try to hone in and, and find the, the issues and solve them. And they have just been awesome. So kudos to them. They're, they're really great to work with and very receptive. So they're making a great yeah. product. Yeah, and, and I just to give everybody a little bit of background because some people don't even know about the Design Doodler, and we have, I guess, almost 3,500 people who own the Design Doodler. Uh, but the Doodler was released, I guess, late last year, mm -hmm. and it uh, it worked for the, the most part pretty well for, I'd say, 80% of the people. Uh, and there was a few bugs that kind of uh, happened. And, and to, I guess, make a long story short, what happened was the developers decided based on all the other cool things that we want to add in the future that we needed to build an entirely new stitch engine and that's really the brains of the operating system for this product because uh, most traditional digitizing programs they'll create objects one piece at a time mm -hmm. and they will mathematically calculate them as they move forward so it's a continual process of uh, you know making something, finishing it, and then moving to the next. The way the Doodler works, because it is kind of a uh, art program that defines stitches, it doesn't look at each piece ind independently. It looks at what you did at the very beginning and where you're up to, which could be you know thousands of objects, mm -hmm. and it has to recalculate everything every time you end up drawing a new object. So it was uh, it was a little bit of an undertaking because... Uh, we had to make adjustments so that everybody could be happy. And I know that, uh, I guess, one of the biggest things was a lot of people were using it who had older systems and probably not enough processing speed. And they were getting, uh, I guess, lag time, which they thought their program was freezing, when in reality, it was just trying to think and, and recalculate objects. So that was sort of the, the you know, overall and they even, the developers, even went to a level of giving options within the settings of the software, and they call it behaviors, so that if you are running an older system, you can default to a different behavior so that it won't take as much processing speed or time. But uh, I agree with you totally, Linda. The developers uh, who are, you know, uh, Pulse Tajima, they, they, I've been involved with them for decades. They have been incredible with designing a program that was specific to what I wanted it to do, but then actually making it even better by getting it to do what you wanted it to do, right? <laughs> we both, I think we both approach it differently. So I think from a developer standpoint, you, you're you testing it one way and then I'm always going the opposite direction. So I think it's we've, our good yeah. team to try to, you know, work out the bugs, but I, I'm just, I'm really, I, I say this every time, I am the biggest fan of the Design Doodler. It is just an awesome program. I, I so far, I haven't found out what it can't do. So I'm always testing it to the limits and it, it is just a lot of fun. So I love it. Yeah, it, it's kind of funny that you say that because, and I do, I should say before we go any further, I want to thank all of the other testers because there's been mm -hmm. a, a lot of people who have yeah. provided feedback and have been testing all the new builds and. Mm -hmm. We want to thank you guys and providing all those videos and all the explanations because those help the developers. They can only fix things when they have kind of a, a trail of breadcrumbs to follow to, to make it happen. But the other thing that uh, I guess my main contact who I guess she's the liaison between us and the developers, she said that uh, Linda has made this software do things that they didn't even think that it could do. And that's what I love is the the creative the you know the creativity and all of the artists that are are using this program mm -hmm. and giving it their own unique little twist, and I think that's been 
a lot of the the fun behind the software. Yeah, I, I, it's it's just fun to go into the group and see what everybody's creating, and then these young doodlers. So I love the kadoodle. That is so awesome because yeah, a lot of our members have been showing the doodler to their grandchildren or neighbors and. Kids are, it's just free. They're not thinking about digitizing. They're just drawing and having a great time. And I just can't wait to see what, how you're going to wrap your head around bringing all the kids in and, and try this program because it's going to be awesome because nothing's better than kids' artwork. I just, oh, yeah. So and, and joyful and free. And, you know, they're, they, they put every little ounce of love into it. And it's, just, it's fun to see it come into stitches. So I'm, I'm really excited about seeing where you go with this. Well, I, I think that's going to be the fun part because let's, uh, if, if I'm being honest about this, kids don't really care about jumps and trims or pull mm -hmm. compensation or underlay or all of the pathing and mapping that to them has no relevance whatsoever. And for us, we know how important it can be depending mm -hmm. on what level you are. So what I love about this is, and I, I'm going to come out with a little video before we release uh, Noah and Eli's video. And I'm hoping that uh, I guess all of the other parents and grandparents and anybody who has, you know, kids that they want to have fun with because embroidery should be fun. Mm -hmm. And I think that the sooner we get uh, a younger generation involved in it as a fun, creative, artistic type of medium, it's going to just make it more fun for us as well. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of contagious, but with the, uh, with the kids, I found when I was trying to wrap my head around doing this with uh, Noah and Eli, I took my widget, which has all of your brushes and everything, and I minimized it to, you know, the bare minimum. And I gave them a couple of options and I set up the artwork a certain way with a certain hoop size so that they didn't really have to think too much about mm -hmm. how to create something. But I also want to do it so that the kids have some understanding. So when mom or dad or grandma or grandpa has to run it on the machine, we're not going to be sitting there frustrated with a million <laughs> trims and jumps and mm -hmm. all those things that we hate. So I, I think it's going to be lots and lots of fun to get mm -hmm. the kids involved. Right? Yeah. So, okay. And one more thing before we go on, because I, I have a wonderful list here that Linda, and actually I, I think I got to put on my glasses because this is your list. I know that when I saw your name on here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes. This is happy doodling with Linda. So these are your top, I guess, uh, 12 upgrades or mm -hmm. updates within the doodler that you wanted to point out to people. And this list, is this currently in the file section of it's, the group? It's in the file section. And then we've also have it, it's pinned to the featured pins at the top of the group. And it's a okay. Word document. I'm going to turn it into a PDF so people can download okay. on the computer or whatever. And, and, but and I, I've now got that, corresponding tips in the group. So I've got a whole new guide section on perfect. how each of these little tools work more specifically. And of course, always ask questions if you have them or you're, you're getting stuck or whatever. And always somebody's willing to jump in to help you out. So, Okay, awesome. And now that I'll have a little bit more time on my hands, I'm going to take a look through these and I'll try to do some some quick little videos as well mm -hmm. so people can get some visuals. I know you're, you're great at that. So you, prob you probably already did that and I, I don't even know it. But uh, but this is the tips list. Um, one thing I did want to let people know, if you don't know what the doodler is, and I'll just explain it really quickly. The doodler is not a digitizing software system. It wasn't meant to replace your Hatch software, your Floriani software, your, you know, Bernina software. Your, it's, it's not meant to be a digitizer. It is meant to be an, a, an artistic doodler. So it's an artistic program or app that actually creates stitches. And the way that I kind of assisted in designing it was so that it would create designs and create them so they were production friendly and kind of common sense on how you path objects and, and you know go from one place to another. So there, there's a lot behind the scenes in this program that people don't see that actually make it easy to use. But I know that um, you know with people who have been trying the software, I, I don't want them to be misled in any way and think that this is a digitizing program that will replace something that you have. Or if you want a digitizing program that's going to do corporate designs or things of that nature, which are very precise, this is not the software for you. But if you want to have, I guess, the artistic ability to just you know create things that will run on run well on your machine and have fun doing it, 
then that's specifically what this program is designed for, right? Would you would you agree with that overall? I wholeheartedly agree. And it, it's yeah. just something you can kind of go off on a tangent. I've been working a lot with different mixed media with in, ink pens, pencils and fabrics and different types of thread and just combining a whole bunch of things. So you, you do get outside of the, the digitizing mode thinking of right and left clicking because you don't right and left click. You're solely drawing on the screen with your pen and it miraculously turns into stitches. I don't know how that works, but it's just awesome. So you can just really have fun. And again, going back to the kid cadoodle thing, it's like kids, you can go back to like when you were in grade school and you weren't afraid to paint outside the lines and just have fun. So it's just an awesome program. And of course you can make very detailed designs and that kind of thing too, but it's just meant that, you know, just jump in yeah. and have fun with it. I, th I think from an artistic point of view, I can actually do more intricate detailed work than I can with my digitizer. Mm -hmm. So in reality, if you're a hardcore embroiderer, you should have, you know, both softwares. One, one isn't mm -hmm. meant to replace the other and both will kind of do something independently different. Uh, I also should let people know that the Doodler is a PC based program that does work best if you actually do have one of these. And I'm going to see if I can flip my screen here. Okay, so I actually have a pen and a screen right here. And when I am using my software with the Doodler, I don't think a mouse is the right way to go. You should have a pen to actually doodle with. So that's one thing that I do want to point out. And those are very, I guess, cost. They're not cost prohibitive like they used to be. You can actually get a 16 or 20 or 24 inch PC monitor now that actually has a pen with it mm -hmm. at a reasonable price. So it's not going to break the bank. Those work with any graphics program. So if you have a digitizing program, it'll actually make that software work better as well. Uh, the other thing I should mention is the Design Doodler does have a free accompanying app for iPad only. And the iPad app will kind of mirror the PC version, but it doesn't run all on its own. It's not meant to be a you know, uh, an app based program that does everything. And part of it is, you know, on my iPad, which I have here, the screen, even though I have kind of the, the larger version of my iPad, I personally would much rather draw on a monitor that's a little larger than on a iPad because it's a little bit smaller. And, and you know, I, I had one customer who called in and said, you know, it's really hard for me to edit my Bezier nodes on my iPad and do it. And I was like, well, yeah, of course it is. It's, it's a tiny little screen and you really shouldn't be using it for that detailed work. You should be drawing on your couch on your iPad and then bringing it into your PC to make any edits or changes. So there is definitely a place for having the convenience of having an app on an iPad, but it, it shouldn't be a program that you buy specifically because of that app. Would you agree with me on that? I, I would agree. And, but I, a lot of people in the group have been saying, can I take it on vacation? Like, of course you can take it on, take your iPad on vacation, capture those mm -hmm. moments and start doodling and then come back home and then you can do the fine tuning on your PC when you're moving the nodes around. Um, but I will say in the, the new update, when you select your node to make any changes, it will now turn red. So it's so much easier to see. That's like you a super fine. great feature because a lot of times you'll have a whole bunch of nodes together. So when you click on that one, it will turn red and you'll, you'll be able to change the angles and the shape of the node. So that was a, a great feature, I thought, that was added. Yeah, to this. And, and I should also mention that the update has been for the PC version. We are mm -hmm. actually up to 2007, which is the mm -hmm. update build number right now. Most people who purchase it back in uh, you know November of last year are probably running on, a, I think it was like 1085 was the build, yeah, I believe. Something like, yeah, okay. been, so, so there was a yeah. whole bunch of builds in between mm -hmm. then which you know, Linda, because you were testing yes, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 2007 is the newest build. And if you're running 2005 and you say, oh, oh, there's another build, to be honest, you can download it. It's not going to affect anything. It probably won't make any difference between 2005 to 2007 because all that that two builds in between did was fix some little issues specific people were having when they were loading the software, right? Yes, that, that's so. correct. And, and 
the people have been great when they did experience any type of issue. And Denny and I always go in the group, the more specifics you can give us, the easier it is for the developers to resolve any bug fixes. Yeah. So always be sure, you know, don't say, oh, I, I don't know what happened. If you can try to remember what tool and all that, it's always helpful. But if you want to check and you're not sure what build you have, if you click on the three dots on the PC version at the bottom right corner of the screen, it will say about and you'll see, um, you know, your build number. So I think it was yeah. Yeah, 1085 was the original. So we're up to 2007. So you can go into the DME site, log in to your account and go to downloads and you'll be able to see the design dealer setup. And Denny's got a, um, a kind of a diagram within the Facebook group. So if you have any issues with that, but the, the build is in your account on the Digitizing Made Easy website under yeah. downloads. So just check the three dots and see if you have 2005 or 2007, and then you are up to date and ready to go. Yeah, and we are making changes with uh, within a lot of that as well. So just so mm -hmm. you know, we're not done yet. We're continuing yep. to improve this program. Uh, uh, and I, I hope a lot of you, and actually I should put up this next slide because I want to thank everybody for their patience because yep. for us to release this program and for us to get something that, you know, worked for 90 or 80% of the people mm -hmm. and then for the developer to, to say, okay, you know what, this is a program that people are loving we're going to not only fix the issues, but we're going to completely start over and give a new stitch engine. And for us to get from that point to here in the amount of time is almost an embroidery miracle. And if you're a computer programmer, you know that the amount of time that went into developing this with the team has been uh, incredible. So again, you know, it's just, it's, it's a, an incredible company, an incredible program. But I do appreciate everybody being patient. So we're giving away this little design pack, which should be as of right now in the file section of uh, the Design Doodler group. You'll see this little piece sloth uh, design They're pack. So cute. Yeah, they are pretty cute. And actually, I'll show you. If, uh oh, I lost my sloths. You know, I this, this a... reminds me of. So it, another improvement is. Um, before people were having issues of not being able to bring in a machine file into the doodler. So now mm -hmm. there's a new, it's been moved up into the little open icon. It's the little file folder and you can bring in any machine file that you have on your, wherever you have it stashed on your computer or a hard drive or whatever, and you can bring that into the doodler. Now keep in mind, you cannot re re edit the, the designs just like you can't take the, your design doodle or design into like hatch or uh, another software and make edits. You have to do it within the software, but you can bring in machine files and then you can doodle around it. So that would be kind of cute to doodle mm -hmm. around one of those slots or, you know, well, at least try bringing a, a file in and get the hang of um, combining a machine file and, and a doodle. So, so for those of you who aren't, I guess, part of the Doodler group and don't have access to these files, they will be available on our site next week if you are a member or you want to purchase them. And we do have the Mylar one here. This is actually Mylar with the sloth and we have the USA piece with the sloth. But as Linda said, I made sure that I included this one as well. And you're 100% right, Linda, the Doodler is not an editing program for outside mm -hmm. files. It's not mm -hmm. meant to edit a PS file or any other file format. That's not what it does. But you can bring in this file into the Doodler mm -hmm. and then you can doodle some branches, some yeah, leaves. Uh, cute. Yeah, so yeah, you all of you- Draw applique leaves. Uh, I think that would be fun. Maybe we should kind of have a little- um, A little contest? Well, not a contest. Just maybe a little challenge everybody in the group to see how, what How they kind do of different it? doodles okay. with the sloth we can come up with. Because if it were a contest, I'm not entering if you are. <laughs> I'm going to challenge I've, you. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned my lesson a long time ago. So anyways, I, I want to thank all you guys, all you doodlers who have been with us since the beginning because you've been very patient. You've helped, helped us get this software to, to where it is. And I hope you continue to assist us so that we can make it even better. We have a lot of things that are are coming for that side of uh, the program. So anyways, we're not gonna do the who wants to win now, but I am gonna call up the software right now. So give me one second. 
And then we're going to go through Linda's list because Linda, you, I'm going to, you obviously have the list in front of you, right? I, I do. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to try to keep up with you and uh, talk through some of the updates or your favorite updates because there is more than the 12 that you've listed here, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's a lot more and there's been a lot of fixes on things behind the scenes that uh, we don't need to get into right now either uh, because to be honest, most of them are beyond my pay grade. I, I, don't I don't even know. I don't even want to know how they figure this stuff out. They're, they're yeah. geniuses. I'm yeah, not I, a techno I, person, so I'm like, oh, I'm glad somebody likes to do that side. I just, I just love it when I can say, oh, that's cool. It works. That's usually <laughs> yeah, what happens yeah, with me. Exactly. So here is the design doodler. And do you want to start at the top, Linda, and yeah, sort of give us start some at the things? top. So if you go to the very top, you'll see design one and design two. So that's a new feature that's been added that you can have multiple pages open at the same time. So if you, let's say you like that little cherub and you doodled part of the cherub and you can copy him and you can go back to design one and then you can paste that onto design one. So it's a great way of combining bits and pieces from other designs to make a whole new design. So it can be, um, you can also bring in a machine file that way too. So it'll, it'll appear in a new tab. So just, you know, keep in mind that you can have multiple um, tabs open. Let's say you've created, you know, a, a design you really love, but you just want one little tiny feature of it, bring it up, copy, paste it onto a new page and you're good to go. So I love that one. That was a big request in the group. So I like that one a lot. So, yeah, for yes. sure. And and I should also mention that the file format for the Design Doodler is a JDX file. Mm -hmm. And we also have on the Doodler a JDS file. So one's a master file, the X file. The other one is a save file because the uh, iPad version does not save out any machine file formats. You have to take your save file, bring it into the PC version, and then you can manipulate it and edit it however you want. So there is, uh, I guess, lots of uh, things that you can do. And th this is the behind the scenes stuff. Like I, I am amazed when I look at a design, an object like this. And if I get into editing, ob you know, pieces to it and doing Bezier, you notice you know, how curves. that turned red right there. Yeah. John and I can come in here and I can, you know, basically take this and I can, you know, change anything. I can add nodes, I can delete nodes, I can make it from straight lines to curved lines. Uh, as you're actually uh, using the satin path, you can mm -hmm. control what type of cornering it does, whether it's a straight corner or a, uh, you know, mitered corner. There's, there's, I mean, so many possibilities in the software beyond just the doodling. Well, and that's what I... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. If, if anybody has seen Barbara Ward's amazing shape shifters, as she's called them, in the group, she takes these basic shapes and she just changes the nodes and the directions, and she's turned them into amazing animals. I mean, we've we've been having fun ba bantering back and forth with each other on what kind of animals or creatures or fruit she can create, and so far. She has not been stumped. So she's done amazing things with the simple shapes that are on that widget and just adjusting the nodes. So if you haven't seen her work, come on over to the Doodler group and you will be amazed at what, what she's done. Yeah, so there, there's really no limitations. And it also has an auto smoothing feature so that as I'm drawing, even if I'm a little shaky, it does give me the ability to smooth my edges as I'm moving forward. So, mm -hmm. and that's something that I really do like, especially when I'm doing kind of artistic merit with running mm -hmm. stitches, it mm -hmm. gives me a really nice effect. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that, that was number one with the tabs, right? Yeah. So I like the tabs. And then if you go down to the, the open um, file folder, the open yeah that one right there yeah so you'll see on there i have to get close to on my glass i'm like oh, so if you click on um the merge what that means is you can merge several jdx files onto one page or you can bring in a machine file and a jdx so merge means you can bring several designs or file types on the screen if merge is not selected you will bring in one design on the screen. So a new tab 
will you know, open up for that new design. So merge means merging of two things, or if it's not selected, um, you will just bring one design in on the screen. Design in. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with that one, there is a preview. So it will preview mm -hmm. all of your yes. stitch file formats. That's uh, awesome. It will merge and it also has one that is convert to outlines. Have you played yeah. with that? I have, I've not tried that one yet. I've got okay. to see what that does. I'll, I'll save that for another video. Actually. Okay. But yeah, that, no, that, yeah, I, that's... I have not tried that. So I'll have to pay attention to that one. Um, okay. And let's see. On um, the. Let's see. Yeah. So there's the preview. So the one on the save, it, on the little floppy disk save icon. So let's say you, you've worked on a design and you've saved it. In the past, when you went to convert it to a machine file, you had to go retype the name. Well, now if you were working on, let's say John called this castle, that, that's the name mm -hmm. of the design. When you pull that up, you can use the drop down arrow to automatically save it to your machine file. So that whole save the whole step right there. So that that was a request that was Which answered. Seems like a small thing, but yeah. I mean the small things matter. Yeah. yeah. And and one thing I do kind of love with this, and I, I Jennifer has not given me permission to buy any of these yet, but this will also save to all of the long arm quilter formats. So yeah. it does it does have not only embroidery formats, but if you are a long arm quilter and if you you know convert to whether it's a uh, you know SSD, which is the I guess side saddle format or the uh, you know, Statler stitcher. I mean, it just, they all of these are included here. So if mm -hmm. you are using the running stitch and doing quilting on your long arm, mm -hmm. you can actually save anything you do within this program on your long arm as well. Yes. I'd love to see, you know, some of our long arm people, you know, post in the group. You do have a video that shows how to kind of create a continuous, um, quilting pattern. So check the YouTube yeah. channel out on that it kind of gives you an idea how, you can make a continuous pattern. Okay. Um, and then number four was the uh, the flip horizontal and that vertical. That is probably one of my favorites because, you know, if you look at if you look at a design and you're like, oh, it's very symmetrical. Well, don't doodle the whole thing. Just doodle, you know, the, the piece that can be um, copied and then flip. So that is down. Mm -hmm. That's that new little icon that you clicked on right there and it'll say yeah. flip horizontal or flip vertically so right now let's say you didn't copy and paste it that part see how you, you just flipped it horizontally so now yeah. then you can flip it vertically and if you wanted to create a whole pattern well then you would copy paste flip vertical and just move it in position so i've got a couple of tips in the group on you know lining things up but it's a really awesome time saving tool especially if you're working on an intricate pattern and you know, I love all my monogram frames and kind of Baroque style. So I posted a couple things on just do one corner and then, you know, mirror flip it and move it into position. And you can create a, a intricate design fast without a whole lot of time. Mm -hmm. So it gives you that. To, and then again, keeping in mind that these are also resizable. Mm hmm. Yes. So you don't, once you, you know, copy something and flip it or, you know, either, either direction, mm -hmm. you can then come in and flip one vertically and, you know, copy that one. We'll just put another one in place here. And then I can take that one and I can do the same thing. So, yes. yeah, I mean, it does make it a whole lot easier than it was before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that, that's a brand new feature. So that wasn't even, that wasn't in before. So I, I, was, I was happy to see that one. Um, for sure. Especially for the shape shifters, right? Yes, the shape shifters. <laughs> awesome. Okay. And then this one, I guess number five, that was something that we had a lot of requests for, a right? Huge amount. So typically we when you bring in your artwork, bring in the backdrop, that little icon, it was a JPEG, PNG, GIF, GIMP. That was one other one that I don't use. But the big request was can we bring in SVG files? And you couldn't mm -hmm. until this new build. So now if you have, a lot of people have SVG files because they use their scan and cut or Cricut machines. And let's say you want to make a doodle out of it instead of, you know, a, a cut, cut design in paper or vinyl. Now you can bring it in and you can trace over it and create, a, you know, an embroidery design from it. So that yeah. was a big request 
answered by our developers. So it'll bring in PNG, JPEG, GIF, bitmap, and now SVG, SVG. which SVG was the big, I guess, one that people were asking for. Yes. Not scalable vector graphics. That's what that stands for. So. Awesome. Okay. And here's where I'm glad you did this list because I'm interested to find out what is the spinning wheel? Well, the spinning wheel, it's for all those who are very impatient like me, who in the past, you know, like, oh, my screen's freezing up. No, it was really thinking in the background. So I'm an impatient person. So now it's the little, the little wheel that spins while the design is being calculated. So let's say you're, you've got a, a big design you worked on and you just click the, um, the branching tool. Well, depending mm -hmm. on how many objects you're branching, it does take a while. And depending on your system for your computer, you will see a little spinning wheel on your screen. So that means back away it's from the thinking. computer. Don't click yep. all those buttons real fast. Get, yourself, get yourself a coffee. Take three deep breaths. <laughs> yep. So that, <laughs> well, that was like, oh, I like that one too. Because it's like, you know, I'm on a yep. fast clicker. I ask my family. They're like, you click too fast and don't read the directions. So. Well, that actually, I'll, I'll do I'll do one thing happen. real real quick here, just so that you can kind of see. Okay, so if I am creating an object, and I'll just do it in a color here, doesn't matter which color, but I'll just create a line like that. And when I create a line like that, and if I select that line, when you select that object, and then you go to your properties, you have to see here that we have something that will adjust the width of the stitches just with a slider, or you can put in the amount. You can adjust the density, so you can have looser or high density. You can do the stitch angles, so it actually changes angles, and that's really cool. Yeah, uh, but that you can actually do inset or outset values, and then you have the types of corners you do, the mitering. I mean, the list goes on and yep. on as far as all of the, you know, oh, we actually, this, the split, yeah, we right haven't there. talked yeah. about that yet. That, but, that's a new one. That, that split um, satin stitches, that, that's a great new feature on the the steel stitch. and what what that does is if you are creating really really wide stitches and a lot of times people don't realize that their stitches will disappear like mm -hmm. they did when i was just sort of playing with the angle there yes the stitches are still there in reality but what they've done is when i go to this uh let's see here it was the angle and i start playing with the angle you see all those little trims that just uh, applied there? Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of little scissors. You probably can't see them on your screen, but those yeah, are I, scissors I it. Yeah. that show you that there's going to be trims there because you've now gone over. And in 3D, you don't see it. It'll actually show you the stitches that can be calculated, but they disappear. Mm -hmm. But now when I come to this and if I click on split long stitches, it's actually going to give me stitch penetrations mm -hmm between those long stitches so that my my trimmers don't activate on my machine. Mm -hmm. So that was a big one because I, I actually, I really like that angle thing. Can you kind of yeah, see that's that? Really I, cool. yeah, like I haven't even tried stitching that, but no, that would I just like be that. probably awesome. So that's, yeah, anyways, that's going to be my, I'm going to be doing this tomorrow morning. I'm going <laughs> to try st stitching that out and seeing what it looks like. Yeah, but besides all cool. that, there is underlay control there's commands where you can control all of your, you know, if you want to force a trim or tie offs, basic mm -hmm. tie offs. So there's so much advanced features. It's kind of funny because I tell people this is really a very simple program on the surface. Like it's mm -hmm. simple for us to create something. But if you start peeling back all of the layers, it is a really intense, powerful program mm -hmm. that has features that most high-end digitizing programs have that's that's the yep. beauty of this you know so if you know how to do nothing you're kind of okay because it will work with you but if mm -hmm. you are a you know kind of an embroidery geek so to speak and you want to you know get in there and with the nuts and bolts all of that is in there as well mm -hmm. so okay uh, anyways uh i didn't even want to show that but what i was going to show linda because you were just talking about uh that feature of the little spinner wheel saying yeah. that it's taking a while there is also a new sitting uh, setting here within the settings the fourth one over now has one called behaviors and the behaviors have three different choices one is immediate one is when idle for five seconds and one is to uh hit a generate button 
And this was where a lot of people uh, with older software, not software, sorry, older hardware, they were having problems because they would start taking a design like this and they would end up creating a hundred different tiny little objects. And just imagine this going on forever and ever and ever. And they would do 5,000 little pieces. And eventually what would happen is it would actually turn into a white screen mm -hmm. and people would think that the software is frozen. Mm -hmm. It didn't freeze. It was actually just having to take time to mathematically calculate everything. So now what you can do, if you are creating a crazy intense design, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up a new window because it doesn't like to switch be between these behaviors. In other words, choose what you want to do before you do it. But if I go to click generate button, when I do this now, I'm going to use that same tool and actually let's zoom into six to one and I'm going to create all of these objects. But if you look now, they don't look like stitches, do they? No, they just look like actual lines. And because this is not mathematically creating stitches, I can draw 10,000 of these lines and it's not going to confuse the software until I hit the generate button and then it will generate everything that I've created. So this is a, a really cool tool. If you are a graphic artist who's used to using all of these drawing apps and you, you know, you, know, you draw things in line art, Mm -hmm. then you can just hit that generate and convert. And then I can keep going and I can start converting more objects. And when I hit generate again, it will then generate those as well. So yeah, that's, that's, that's an awesome big feature. Yeah, that's, that's huge because everybody before who is having issues with memory issues, mm -hmm. that was the best solution so that whether you have a computer that's, you know, uh, a year and a half old, which is really old now. No, it's not, but you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> but, but if you have an older laptop and you weren't able to run the doodler mm -hmm. because of processing speed, you can now switch your behavior and you'll still be able to play and doodle. Yeah. And, so, I, and I've used that too, because my laptop is probably, I don't know, it's about six years old. It's, it's getting a little, a little ragged around the edges, but when I noticed that it, it was lagging like that, then I I switched the behavior and then it, it, it's great. So if you yeah. notice, depending on whatever design you're working on, if it's really intense with detail, just, just change the behavior. If it's something simple, a running stitch or whatever, you can just keep it on the regular, you know, generate as created, I guess, or I'm trying to think of that. Yeah, yeah. Generate as created or, um, and it, it goes fine. Now, now, this one was, I guess, number seven, and this was, I guess, some of your things about hitting yes. the three dots. And I'll just, I'll give a quick thing real quick, and then you can jump in okay. uh, with the ones that you had. But there is a ton of stuff here from general hoops to grid, and I do use all of these in certain mm -hmm. situations, especially when I'm going to be doing a set up your kadoodles, you know, mm -hmm. your kids who want to doodle. Mm -hmm. Because with this software, when I look at the general tab and I have all of my, my different brushes within my widgets, uh, a kid might see all of those and be a little confused. Yeah. So you can go in here and I can say, you know what? I know that my four-year-old doesn't even know what calligraphy is, never mind trying to explain what the tool does. So I can get rid of that tool and get rid of the applique tool and, you know, kind of taper things down a little mm -hmm. bit, so to speak. Speaking of that, I'll get rid of the taper tool. And then you can go into all of the individual settings within all these tools and minimize those too. Mm -hmm. But on the other side here, you also have some really important new check boxes. And I think one of them that you pointed out was the last one, right? The last one, auto save. I thought was Yay. Like, yeah. okay. <laughs> I, I think it, there should be a, a big roar in the group because that was a biggie. It's like, oh, if because of you know the, the stitch generation issue that's been resolved with the behaviors, a lot of people designs went poof because it didn't automatically auto save. So it will auto save your design once every minute. So mm -hmm. you you know always I always am in the habit of naming my design file once I start it. So at least I know it's named yeah. and you know I'm good to go. But while you're working, if by chance it it would crash for whatever reason that design is has then been auto saved but and you can't really pull this up you can't really demo this but there is on 
the three dots, John, if you go back down, click on that yep. three dots again, let's say you're working on design and it, it by chance it would crash. If you yep. go up to, it says restore auto save. Auto save. Yep. It will right here. It's the second back the design at the point it was last saved it. Now it will not have the design file name. So let's say you called it branches like this. You yep. will need to, you can go back in and rename it. But the point is, the design's not lost that you it was saved wherever it was a minute ago so if if by chance you would get you know the, the screen would go white you can go back into restore auto save and it will bring and, that file back up and you screen. don't lose the last three hours no, of uh, no, doodling. no 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 yeah. so that that that's huge really yes. really Really big, and, and so. speaking of branches, I just had to highlight that and oh, click yeah, the branching awesome, icon awesome so branching that tool. yeah, the, the branching actually has been more defined as well. The mm -hmm. pathing of the branching and the underlay is now more defined. So you actually, you know, if you saw the before, there was all those trims and jumps mm -hmm. in there. And this is where people don't have to learn pathing as much. They can doodle whatever they want, select the objects that they want to branch together. And with a click of a button, you can auto branch all of those pieces. Mm -hmm. So that that one was in the last builds, but mm -hmm. it actually works better now than it did yeah, before. It's it's an awesome tool. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And B was export images. Yeah. So that's new. So you can, let's say you've got this design saved and you want to maybe print a little note card. It will change it at, into a PNG file, so you can actually awesome. print it out as like it'll be like a little outline, you know, show up your design. It, that's kind of handy. I haven't played with that in the group, but I think I'll kind of work on something and, and to show people, you know, some options for what you can yep. do with the little PNG file of your design. And and just so you guys all know, also the uh, check for update, uh, Linda, you did kind of cover that, but that yeah. is still a little bit of a work in mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. We are, uh, I guess, fine tuning that a little bit more mm -hmm. so that it will be more automated. Mm -hmm. But all of the instructions are there. You can check to see if you have the newest version, and then you can download the newest version mm -hmm. and update your software. Mm -hmm. So if you're ever wondering if something else has been released, uh, obviously be part of our newsletter, all that good stuff, yeah. or the Design Doodler group, because we always let people know what's happening there. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's easy, as well as the help. Uh, it'll be directed to the user guide, and mm -hmm. that is being continually, I guess, updated as well, yeah. based mm -hmm. on builds. So uh, that one will help you as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And okay. let's see. Oh, and on in the applique brush, the applique tool, They've added an additional tap down stitch. So um, if you just just draw like a circle, John, and, and using the applique yeah. tool. I'm just going to go to immediate. Oh, yeah, I'm going to change my behaviors. Yeah. And let's call up another new window. Yeah. And you just want me to do a round applique just, yeah, or just, a heart or something? Just a round applique or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So did I get rid of my appliques or what did I do with it? I might have. Uh, hold on. Pressure sensitive. Oh, Remember, yeah. I was just playing. Yeah, yeah I yeah. did. I turned yes, off my yes, applicants. That, that really does work when you press. Yeah. So button. let's go back to my settings and let's yeah. re restore the defaults mm -hmm. and close it. And now yep. my applique tool it. is back. Yep. There we go. Okay. So we'll just make. Yeah. We'll just make a whatever. We'll make an arrow. Yeah. So there's an arrow applicant. So there's an arrow, and if you go then under properties. Um. Select that, it. Yeah. And so, yeah, under properties. And if you scroll down, you'll now see it's not checked. It says, uh, so zigzag, zigzag underlay. underlay. So you, you can have it stitch the placement, the tack down, and additional zigzag underlay as well as the border. So let's say your fabric is kind of fringy and fray. You know, you might want to add that extra um, stitch, stitch to it. You can also, mm -hmm. you know, uncheck one of the other options if you didn't want to have a straight line tack down stitch and just have yep. that underlay. So if I, I want to have my placement, but I don't want to have a tack down, yes. then I can just do that. Mm -hmm. And it'll now just give me the placement with the zigzag. Or mm -hmm. if I want to get rid of the zigzag, it'll do that. I can actually mm -hmm. tell it to sew the border or not sew the border, yep. uh, which, uh, you know, I don't know why you would want to do that. But one thing that I do love within this is if I go to the properties I know that within the appliques, I also have a whole bunch of motifs that There's I can actually ton. choose. I think it's like 20 or 25 of them. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you can have so. all those options to change. I, I know the applique, we, it's very popular in the group raw edge and regular applique. Yeah. So there's just, you know, additional all kinds of things you can play with this new tool. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And I'm going to see the motif that I want. So I can just change it to any motif that I want. It gives me a motif. And then the cool thing is if I don't want that motif as an applique, but I just actually want to have a motif stitch that you can turn off all of your other settings. And now you just have a motif. Yes. That's awesome. So that's, that's kind of cool as well. So there are motifs, you know, a ton of them that are included in the software yes. as well, that don't have to be treated as an applique. You can turn them on or off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Okay, now I know we're starting to run out of time because you don't want yep, to keep, keep it too that, long. I, got, I think most of the, the biggies, so yeah. Yep, okay, the option to split. Uh, the nodes will turn red when selected. I mean, that, that's the beautiful part of this program, in my opinion, is if you are just doodling, so if I'm just doodling with the simplest tool, which is a running stitch, mm -hmm. and I choose my you know color that I want, and I got to try to choose something so we can see this as we're creating it, but as I draw an object and I, oops, actually, I didn't want to use that tool. Sorry. I just want to go here and use a free hand. So let's go back to my running stitch. Let's do free hand mode. And if I just draw an object like this, when I finish that object, and if I go back over top of it, there actually, you can't see it really well, but there's a little red round circle around the end point, mm -hmm. And that's where I can continue on. And that is the, I guess, intelligent part of this program is that you can doodle and keep going and not have any jumps or trims or needle, you know, in, yes. not needle in, sorry, tie-ins or tie-outs. It will automatically join every object as you continue to make a path, which gives you quality stitching when you're done. And that's kind of the beauty on this, because if people do want to doodle a design, they can come in and they can get very, very artistic with doodling colors together. If I want to start blending objects, I just have to go like this and I can create an object there and I can blend a second color in like this. And you're just blending stitches together now at this mm -hmm. point and it, it looks awesome. So yeah. that's, that's the cool part about this program. Easy to yeah. use, simple, but sews out well. Yeah. No, awesome. Okay, and we have a whole bunch of other stuff as well, but we won't go into that because uh, we're pretty much at time, but we have a couple things we need to do. We need to give away some stuff because everybody right. loves free. That's so right. let me just call my slide back up. Okay, so, and let me call this back up. Okay, some questions. Okay, shoot, James. All righty. Can you hear James? Asking, I can't. How do I, I can't. know okay. when working Sorry. through the original tips, what has been upgraded? But, oh. I, go ahead, Linda. Oh, um, I, I think I heard you. So the, the first build came out. If you go up into the guide section, I think there's 53 tips. Um, and then I started doing new doodler tips for these specific features in this build. So there's another guide section. So I think we've got them as design doodler build 205 tips. So as we continue to update, always check the guides at the top of the Facebook groups because you will find loads of information and tips on how to use all these tools. And of course, if you have specific questions, we love answering them in the group. So, you know, jump on in and, you know, post a question and we're happy to answer that. So as I come up with new tips, I always post them in the group, but the guide section has them all. Awesome. awesome. And I'll interrupt real quick before you get to the next question, James. Next que next thing I wanted to say was type in either the word cat or dog to win a prize because we just released this week a uh, cat and dog pack for rescues. And uh, somebody is going to win the cat or the dog pack, depending on which one you want, within Facebook and YouTube. So we'll get a, a name from there, but type those in if you'd like to win the rescue dog or cat pack. Okay, so go ahead, James. Cool. Uh, Linda said, I love how you keep improving this program. I'm a long armor and look forward to designing in this program. So thank you, Linda. Tammy is asking, what is the minimum processor speed or size required for optimum running of Doodler program? I think that those are within the frequently asked questions on the design Doodler page on our site. 
So uh, hopefully one James or one of the uh, the other deers will put that link in there. It's on our website under the software tab. The first one you'll see is design doodler and there's frequently asked questions and we do have all of the minimum spec guidelines there mm -hmm. for you to check out. Perfect. Vicky is asking, can you opt out of the split long stitches? Yes, you can have them turned on or off. Yeah. Awesome. Um, which stitch option is the cutting outline? The cutting outline? Uh, that would be the placement. That's yes. the tack down line. So if you stitch the placement line and then you lay your fabric down, you stitch the tack down line, and then that's where you can trim around and then finish it with the cover stitch. Okay, and my brain is turning right now because I'm I'm just gonna after we get off here, I'm gonna write down another request for the programmers for a future release. So <laughs> I have a I haven't, I haven't, I've got another one for you too. I won't. Okay, okay. Well, we'll we'll keep we'll keep bringing them right. And any ideas you guys have who are doodlers, let us know. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that's about it. If anybody else has any questions, just leave them in the. Uh, okay, chat and when you guys are ready. Corner. James, let me know and we will uh, give away that prize. Uh, also want to let people know Christmas in July, all of our designs, Christmas designs are 50% off right now. So if you want to get ready for Christmas, uh, go onto our site. Uh, if you're a member, obviously you can download whatever you want anytime. Uh, I'm hoping you guys will all join us next week. We are going to do a live uh, same time, same day. And we have a big, a gigantic and enormous announcement Linda, you know about this. I've told you. And it, 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 and it's good. You do not want to miss this. I'm just yeah, you, telling you right now. You do not you, want to miss this. Yeah, you are one of the, you, Linda, are one of the few selected, selected people on the planet who knows what we're going to announce next week. So please it, join us next it's week. It's big and you don't want to miss it. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> I can't say anything else because Jesse will have my head if I, <laughs> if I spill the beans on this one. But please join us next week. And we do uh, have to announce our Stitch to Win uh, for June. We uh, try every month to, I guess, uh, do the Stitch to Win. Well, we do it every month, but I try not to get too behind. So I think that it's not bad because we're in July. So we, we haven't yeah. skipped a month yet. Uh, so we are going to do our Stitch to Win. The way to enter our Stitch to Win, and I don't have all the information in front of me, but all you do is you run any one of our samples on anything you want posted in any one of our groups with, I think there's a hashtag on there. And is that correct, James? And then hashtag embroidery legacy. And then Beth takes every single submission and we put it into a draw. And then one lucky winner every month gets the embroidery enthusiast membership, which is valued at over a thousand dollars worth of designs. And uh, you actually can win that. And mm -hmm. there's really, uh, so I'm going to spin that now if I can find it. I, th I think I did this. Uh, okay. No, I didn't. So Linda, can you do a little song and dance real quick while I get. Uh... I'm not allowed to <laughs> sing or whistle according to my family. So. <laughs> <laughs> How about I go ahead and uh, announce the winners. Okay. You announce Facebook the winners, James. Sounds good. So our design winner on YouTube is Kim N. Congrats, Kim. And congrats. our winner on Facebook is Nancy Zander. So congrats, congrats, that's, Nancy. That's awesome. Okay. Let's just see. Oh, there we go. Okay, I got it now. And I think I have it. Can you see that on screen, James? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yay. Okay. And I'm going to spin this. This is for our Stitch to Win. Okay, Brenda, Brenda Lee. Awesome. So you are this month's Stitch to Win winner, and all you have to do is send us an email at embroiderylegacy.com, contact at embroiderylegacy.com, and we will get that prize out to you right away. And other than that, uh, that we announced our winner. Uh, just you know, check out all of our great resources on Digitizing Made Easy. We do have a 101 cheat sheet. Even though the design doodler is easy to use, any background or theory you have about embroidery will help make any software program better, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 
So, and uh, join us on social media. We have a bunch of different groups. We have a hatch group because we love yep. the hatch software. That is a digitizing I'm, program. I'm always over there. That is fabulous software. And you can create great stuff in hatch and bring it into the doodler. So exactly. You know. Yeah. When, when, <laughs> Because we are an official hatch reseller, it was very important to me personally to not have something that competed with mm -hmm. something that we offer because uh, the hatch is an incredible digitizing program and the doodler is an incredible doodling program and they don't really conflict with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, the embroidery legacy group, that's our generic group. We have, mm -hmm. of course, our doodler group as well, which is, is growing. We hit 3,800 mm -hmm. members that's, actually, that's awesome. so that's really cool. And then, of course, our YouTube channel. We really appreciate it if you guys subscribe and, you know, hit that bell so you're notified every time we have a video. And James is in control of all that. We, we're we pumping out a lot of content, aren't we, James? Mm -hmm. We're keeping you busy. Yeah, there's a lot in the works as well. So I want to thank you, Linda, for sure. joining us. It's always and fun. If anybody has any other questions, uh, Linda's phone number is area code. <laughs> no, just <laughs> <laughs> okay. This might be the last interview we ever do together, right? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everybody. And we wish everybody a very happy weekend. Uh, my, my grandkids go back tomorrow with Jennifer. I am going to drop them off at the airport. I'm coming home, <laughs> crawling into bed into the fetal position and <laughs> sleeping for three days straight. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think you'll probably need that. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you everybody for joining us and thank you, Linda. I appreciate it. All right, we'll see you over in the doodling group. Awesome. Thank you.